Here we go, man. All right. Fall season episode seven. With the third guy. With the yeah, third dude. Third guy. All right. Well, nice to have you here, man. So, yeah. thanks. Thanks Back by much. popular demand. The the response was huge. I, I was got it. Response? Oh, man. 404-1207. Most of what we got was just bring back Bradley. That's Can't right. get enough That's Bradley. Right. So we, give me more Bradley. So we heard your cries. Yeah. We brought him hither. Yeah. And I'm researching. <laughs> if any of those are ladies, I'll forward the text number to you so you can find out who it is. So oh, we might yeah. have the mom. That's, yeah. That's right. That's right. Mom might not want her baby. The betting process. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Your parents are experienced about that. It's letting the <laughs> letting them go, letting them leave and cleave. So yeah, hey, yeah. Man, thank you for fishing for us, man. Yeah. On Sunday, yeah. Um, uh, First Corinthians chapter eleven, start at verse two, two through sixteen, two through sixteen. A. This week will be two through sixteen. Sermon B. Okay. So yep, a two part series. That is, yeah. Lots to unload, man. There's a lot, and and yet finish the sermon feeling like ah, I could have said, I should have said, I would have cleared up, and some of that came in through questions and stuff. So that's that's helpful as well. Yeah, so, I was kind of really you know, go ahead. No, yeah. just really appreciate the feedback. I think yeah. I think that's one. You know, this even started from we knew of churches that at the end of the sermon they they have the text number up, and then the pastor gets back up mm -hmm. and answers questions, and it was like. A, I'm really tired by the end of the sermon, and B, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to answer questions right away. So mm -hmm. it, it does work helpfully, though, because some mm -hmm. of the things that came in, I think one of the things, because you always ask, like, what's on the cutting room floor? What do you feel? The topics that we're tackling mm -hmm. this week and even next week, um, the text we were in doesn't handle every angle of the topic. Mm -hmm. So then naturally questions come in. And I think it revealed to me, like, a lot of times we have enough time in this podcast that it's like maybe we open up for like what are other theological questions you have and it might not come that week mm -hmm. but in a future week we might go hey let's let's tackle this one too i know somebody sent one in months ago that asked kind of i've got friends that have a different take on what spiritual gifts are appropriate for today mm -hmm. And I basically sent back to him, that's great. We're going to tackle that. Actually, you know, I've been whining like a baby about head coverings. It's like, well, we get out of that and then we're going to get into sign gifts and everything else. Yeah. So it's not like, but we'll, we'll tackle those earlier, but there might be other ones of like, hey, I'm talking, you know, help me understand this about the Trinity or help me do this or that, that we, we'd we offer that too. Mm -hmm. So we're available. Yeah. 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 Cool, man. Well, honey, you can like, Talk to me when I get home about this, but I thought at one point in uh, while Danny was preaching, we were kind of locked arms like this. And as you know, I don't blame you at all. But as as the sermon was going on, I thought you like slipped your arm out. I don't. Why? Oh. Like what happened? Like I, I don't. I don't. I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, got I think you totally did. Yeah. I'm just gonna have some coffee. <laughs> have, have a sip of water if you want there, man. I'm always in trouble. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Well, Brad, do you got any questions, Matt? Uh, yeah, we had two questions submitted for us. Uh, first being the CSB translates wife in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 3, 5, and 6, and verse 10 as woman. Mm -hmm. And this seems to be a more consistent view in the entire context of the passage. The teaching of Paul clearly lays out the principles of women honoring men, not just wives to husbands. If that were the case, it could be tempting for single women to shrug it off and say it doesn't pertain them. Now, the Greek word translate translation of wife in the ESV strong strongs says woman. Likewise, the use of husband for man would it open the meaning to be a better understanding if we went beyond the husband slash wife relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the interpretive question is that in this passage, when it's singular, it is speaking to, it is it is a word that can mean woman. Mm -hmm. And depending on the context, it's a word that can mean wife. Mm -hmm. It is a word that can mean man. And depending on the context, it can mean husband. Mm -hmm. We do that today. Like you speak of, depending on the context, you get away with it. But like your wife could say, that's my man. Or you can say, hey, my woman said this to me today. You know, like, and we get what that means kind of with that, with that inflection. Um, there's two things with that. I think one is like that, then that becomes a discussion. Like as we go to next week and we're looking at the covering, does the covering, is it something that applies just to married women or is it something that applies to every Christian woman? Um, and, or the concept of that, at least the, the second one is, 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 yeah, I kind of followed where the text usually went. 
um, with what they've done with the ESV. CSB is a good translation. It's Christian Standard Bible. It's good. Um, and they chose probably the purer thing, which is just to say, hey, let's just put man and woman and let the reader decide. Mm. Could this be the husband and wife? I think it really, what threw that for me to the greater extent was just like verse three, I thought set the table for it of the head of every man is Christ. Yeah. And so we're talking a bunch of men. The head of a wife is her husband. Mm. Technically, it's the head of woman singular is man mm. singular so i think where it's pushing in that moment now in other places it says every and it could be translated wife or woman but like in that passage it's, it, it seems to be laying out i think a greater structure um by keeping it singular well what woman what man that that only seems in the context to make sense we're talking a marriage dynamic okay and i think that so it, it depends on how we're looking at it when the question's asking like could this apply to all mm -hmm. and i would say yes and no like are men um in or is, is there male headship in the church absolutely because we have male elders mm -hmm. so everyone's kind of under the headship of the elder team who's under the headship of Christ, mm -hmm. but is leading the church in that way. So married, single, widowed, whatever you show up at church. Yes. There's, there's male headship that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that mean every man is the head of every woman? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have um an authority by being a man just naturally over a woman. Now, I know some people disagree about that. So that's that's going to be my own personal application take of this. But I know in the past, um, there are that th some men would hold to that view then of saying there's never should be in a, a situation where a woman is an authority over a man. So she shouldn't be a manager in a place that you work if there's men underneath her. Mm -hmm. She could never hold a political office if she's going to be over other people because she's a woman. Mm -hmm. um, I don't personally hold to that view. I understand mm -hmm. some people do. Um, I don't think that's what this text is teaching. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I would say yes. Um, and we should be showing honor to each other no matter what. So yeah, the single woman that's in the church or the widow or the divorcee or whatever, she can still show honor to men. She can still be a part of the church that recognizes the headship of the elders who are men. But I don't think it means that every Joe who walks up to her is able to just say, hey, I'm a man. Mm -hmm. So you need to you need to take what I'm saying yeah. with a little more authority. Yeah. Um, first of all, I don't think that's where the passage is going for even us yeah. and what we would do. But second of all, I think that's part of the clarity um, is that it, it's not. It, and I think that's I, I do think that's a dangerous trend that pushes this doctrine further than what it's supposed to that that changes from a call for like a wife to submit to her husband that actually becomes more of a husband um, suppressing his wife. Mm -hmm. And I think those are two completely different things, yeah. even though from the outside, they might look a little bit the same. So that's, yeah. that's why we kind of made the interpretive decision we did is, is like following first of all, what ESV had, but also to kind of clarify, like, I don't think man just by nature of having the X or Y, I don't remember which one. Well, we have that's your work. X's men, X is men yeah. two X's. And a woman is XY. No, I don't know. No, okay, whatever it is, <laughs> just by nature, that I don't think it naturally. <laughs> Brad, well, just, you know, just, you know, hey, when's the last time you took biology? When I was a baby, dude. Like twenty-five uh, years ago. When was the last time you took biology? Four years ago. Four years ago. I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, so by the very nature of just being a man, I don't think that automatically puts the man in the position of of a headship in, in every environment, every relationship. Okay. Okay. So I'm not gonna lie, man. Like Paul had me really, really confused. Right, right. We He's can, Paul. We, yeah. Yeah. And I think you unpacked it very well, but it, and I don't want to put you on the spot. I always say that every single week. Yeah. Yeah. On the spot. Yeah. What happened to my dog that died when I was five? I have to put you on the spot. Yeah. yeah. Good. But man, look, if you could sum up in one imperative statement what this portion of passages was about tell us i know that's difficult with that but honor god okay by honoring that male and female are not the same okay and that in that god has instructed headship okay. 
And I think that kind of flows into the the second question a little bit. Yeah. That somebody asked. Go ahead, Bradley. I didn't have a question for myself about headship. Um, question for yourself. So you want well, to ask it and answer? It, it? Well, that I don't think awesome. answer for myself. No. But I, think it's, <laughs> I was more in the relation of verse three as it's talking about three different types of headship. It's talking about yep. um, the head of every man is Christ and the head of every wife is her husband and the head of Christ is God. And you went into you went into it for like 10, 15 minutes, but still just confused me. <laughs> yeah. I even listened to it this yeah, morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still was confused yeah. with just how each of them were correlating together and just you yeah, know, if you want to give a better understanding of it. Sure. Sure. I, I think you know that's kind of what it wrestled with is like is, is if it's an authority issue, we run into a few well, first of all, it's a source issue. Like that what head means is that woman came from man and that uh, man comes from Christ, and so therefore Christ comes from God. We've run into theological heresy, yeah. right? So it's like, okay, it can't be a source issue. If we go the direction of authority issue, it's it's possible, um, provided we handle it correctly. Of we have we have statements where Christ was sent by the Father, and He says He's come to do the will of the Father, like He is submitted himself uh philippians 2 that he humbled himself all the way to taking on man and coming to the cross like so we you do have some language to that direction although i think sometimes when that's emphasized people start to to push that out is like okay where's authority reach the rub it's when you're asked to do something you really don't want to do when you're you, you know well if that's the case then we find the trinity kind of severed a little bit if we push that too hard so that's where like preeminence came and trinitarily, I think you can go all the way, like the Holy Spirit's chief aim, according to the scriptures, is to bring glory to the Son. Mm. So that's why we talk. Like if we spend a lot of time as a church talking about the Holy Spirit, I think he's actually frustrated in that moment because he's that that worker who's wanting to bring glory to the Son. So he's saying, don't, don't focus on me. Accent the Son. Mm. Why do we make much of Jesus? We make much of Jesus to the glory of God. So like that Philippians 2 passage even says, you know, that Jesus goes to the lowest place and then is exalted. And that's where we get where every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Like he has a maximum place says, well, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Mm -hmm. So like Jesus isn't content to just have it rest on him. He wants to kind of push it on up to the Father. And so I think that's where where it's kind of lending itself is like, we shouldn't let glory rest on us. We should be looking to take that glory to Christ. Wife shouldn't just want glory to rest on her, but should be looking to, to, to bring glory and honor to her husband. And then in the same way, we could look and say, man, that's absolutely Christ's aim. Mm -hmm. Christ was always looking to, to take glory onto the father. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's so hard because so much of the conversation about headship does involve conversations about authority but not exclusively and i think in the world we live in it's really hard for us to separate that out because it's just like i use the illustration of somebody was walking out yesterday and we talked about it a little bit i said it's like how the whole saying you've heard of is like how's a fish know that it's wet well it doesn't because it like that's just life that it's lived in mm -hmm. and we've i'd love to have been able to be there to watch adam and eve and what that dynamic looked like before sin entered the picture because mm -hmm. i think we get all a whole healthier picture that would even give us a better clear picture of our savior yeah so yeah yeah hey i'm gonna talk one of the questions yeah. within the list brother yeah. if you don't mind hey, go ahead. but i know nothing's more frustrating than uh for a, a wife to follow a husband mm. who cannot lead mm -hmm. and the women first of my first of all my wife is a pro when it comes to finances mm. like when i grew mm -hmm. up i did not learn how to manage money well um money slipped through my fingers and it was from her that i learned how to manage our money now she took over she had the finances for the probably the first half of our marriage and it wasn't until but maybe four or five years ago where i took that over but learned from her uh -huh. um man nothing could be more frustrating than for a wife to submit to her husband who is bumbling and bu bumbling everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, so when you think about that, Danny, think about yeah. that. Um, is why can't a woman? What? How? How? Is it right? 
for the woman to submit to a husband who keeps jacking things up. Yeah. Or yeah. or or to consider him as the head without being disgruntled about it. Yeah, I mean like, there's levels to that. Like, you know, you have uh and I just blanked on her name, but the the wife whose husband is an idiot and <laughs> like will not receive David in the Old Testament. David ends up marrying her because he ends up dying and she basically comes to David and basically says like, "Hey, be patient with my husband. He's a fool." Mm -hmm. You could say, oh, it's not honoring at all, except for you realize she's trying to save his life. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to appeal for like grace and grace and patience from him because she sees what's going on. So her intelligence, her wisdom is not called to be suppressed. She actually, I think it's Abigail. She she goes and approaches David and is actually, even in that moment, seeking the back to the passage last week, seeking the advantage mm -hmm. of her and her husband, but not just exclusively her. Um, I don't think this idea of headship requires, and I think that's where we get into even that skip in principle and get into application of like, what roles does that mean? And mm -hmm. could she oversee the, I would look at the finance question and go, that's got nothing to do with headship. Okay. That's, you know, as far, as long as the couple's working together in communion, yeah, you she, know, she got and, skills. I yeah. Got skills the example I heard was I heard a guy one time went to a pastor and said, I can't lead my family spiritually. I'm illiterate. Like I literally can't read. Mm -hmm. The pastor looked at the wife who was in the meeting with him and said, can you? And she goes, yeah. Obviously, if you're a dude that can't read and you're surviving society, you pick up a lot orally and you follow things. So he's like, so could your wife read? Mm. You understand what she just read? Explain it a little and then pray. Mm. And the husband goes, well, yeah. He goes, then you can lead. I mean, same thing. Like we get our kids around to read the Christmas story and Advent, we have one of our kids read it. It doesn't suddenly mean we've turned authority over to them. Mm, We're giving them participation in the good of what's happening. So I think that's part of the hardest thing about teaching the idea of headship in our culture, I think, where we live, is a lot of people already recognize the difference between a husband and a wife. And a lot of people would even acknowledge that the husband should be in a place of headship. Mm. And a lot of the application of that becomes male chauvinism. Mm. And so because I picture the 1950s and when I finish my long day at work, I want to sit in the chair and have you bring me my slippers and my pipe and the paper. Um, and now we, what, 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 now we now we apply it to what? I don't know what slippers would be. The paper would be the Internet and, you know, whatever. But like that we think that's what headship is. And that's not what the Bible is describing at all. Yeah. Um, so I would say if if your husband struggles in an area. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can graciously, mm -hmm. uh, in a way that honors him, have the conversation with him of like, how can I come alongside of you to help us as a family succeed? Not, hey, dumb, dumb, why don't you give this to me? You're a clown. You can't do it. That's one thing. I'd say the other one is, is when you, you know, use jack things up or whatever phrase you use, First Peter 3 gives some wisdom to a woman who's stuck with a, in a situation, I don't say stuck with the man because she's married the man for life, but but stuck in a situation mm. where the man that she's married to does not profess Christ mm. and is sinning. And what is her response supposed to be? Yeah. And her response, first Peter three lays it out is really is, is still honoring. It's looking to obey the Lord, mm. submit, and that her life could convict and speak to the man. That doesn't mean just put up with it. Right. I think there's conversations going to happen on her part that are honoring and respectful. Our children especially as they get older, you, you can start approaching. My children can approach me now and address sin they see in my life. And they can do it in a way that's respectful and honoring, mm -hmm. even though it's a very scary conversation that, that feels like they're maybe stepping into something. And it's like, no, you can, you can pull that off. Yeah. Um, so that can be done. But also would say to that woman, first Peter two, like the church wants to be involved in that too. Like you're not left to yourself. We mm -hmm. want to reach out to that man. If he's never professed Christ and try and draw him in and get him involved uh, so we can hear the gospel, or if we've got a man who's turned from Christ, the church is going to go, including the elders, and pursue that brother. We're not going to just leave you there to just like take it, mm -hmm. um, but we want to be a part of the solution too. Yeah, yeah. Well, the wife, the wife is supposed to. If the wife's glory is to bring honor to her husband by respecting and submitting to him, now also you have the case of the husband not having actions, I guess, that the wife would want to submit to. What if his actions and behaviors or beliefs are not respectful? Then how would hmm. you balance standing firm in what you believe is right? If that means just disagreeing with your husband and 
how is your respect and honor him in that same time? Yeah. Yeah. I think that even with the question, the person like brought up the, the idea of the line illustration I gave and somebody's at the front of the line and it's not an issue of value. It's not an issue of skill. It's not an issue of worth or godliness. Um, and they, they kind of ask the question saying, well, that's the case kind of putting both of those together. What you said was like, what if the woman's a better leader? What if she makes better decisions? What if she's known the Lord longer and knows the Bible better? Why couldn't she be the one at the front of the line? And I would say, I agree if God's word had allowed us in our marriage to decide which one of us was supposed to be in the front of the line. Mm -hmm. But I think the appeal that the scripture is making is even by God creating man first and then making woman from man, God established from creation the order that it would be the man at the head. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he did it to his glory to display headship and submission biblically. And so what I mean by that is, is if it was left up to us to decide who's the one who's most qualified in a situation, um, that doesn't require submission even in headship. And what I mean by that is um, there are women who do not have a problem at all, even struggling with the idea of headship and that they would submit to their husband because they're like, that's what I want to do. That's the way I'm wired. I'm not, I don't want to take charge of something. I don't want the responsibility that's there with that. I'd, I'd rather, well, praise God. And that's awesome. They can walk in it. And I'm sure it's not that 24 seven. There's moments that challenge it for the most part though. That's not necessarily display that's displaying the concept but it's also displaying the concept because it's kind of wired into you. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a true submission to God to the, it, it is, a, I don't want to take that away if a woman's in that place. It's not that she's not submitting to God, but it's also, it's not communicating, I'm doing this because it's God's way, because mm -hmm. it's just, we're doing it because it works. Mm -hmm. oh, I see what you mean. In the same way, yeah. the man who likes to be the the head and he reads in the scriptures that he's to be the head and is like, all right, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. And is like in, willing to take that position. It's not necessarily displaying that he's submitting himself to Christ to take the head because that's what he's been called to do. Mm -hmm. But he just kind of wants to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And hey, lucky for him, it works out that way in the right. scripture. Right. I think by God, before any of us existed, just there with Adam being created first. So even before Eve existed, saying, I'm going to establish it in this order, it requires us to display to the world a submission that says, I'm going to follow God's way, even if I think in my own mind, I could create something wiser. Mm -hmm. So for that wife, who's a better decision maker, wiser, known the Lord longer, really digs into her Bible. And it looks from all appearances, if we were going by qualification, mm -hmm. she should step into the lead. Yeah, She's actually displaying the glory of God and what submission looks like mm -hmm. by being willing to take that, that second chair oh, that's and say, I want to honor my husband. I want to use the gifts God has given me to help him flourish mm -hmm. so that our family can flourish. And the and you say, why are you doing that? And it's a, it's genuine submission that's being displayed because it's like, I'm doing it because I'm trusting God. Oh man, I'm submitting I, by I faith. Just, I just got that. Well, that, and just, so, that, that, that right there, what you just said, hit me in a way where now I understand. And that's where it and comes into us clear. then too. Mm. Like what is the, you could argue, I was talking to somebody else at the door about this. You could argue that the very first sin in the Bible was a sin of omission, not commission. So the sin of commission is the Eve ate of the tree. Mm. The sin of omission, you could argue is God created Adam. God gave the instructions about the garden to Adam. God then created Eve. How's Eve supposed to find out about the instructions? Mm. Adam's the head. Mm. Adam was supposed to mm. teach, explain, protect, mm. shepherd her, mm. right? Mm. They're walking in the garden. The serpent comes. Mm. Serpent enters into a conversation with Eve. And what does Adam do? <laughs> Stands there right beside her. Which because when she ate of the tree, it says, and then she gave it to her husband who was with her. Mm. He bailed on his role of headship. Mm. And the whole world fell apart from it. Oh man! And every single one of us men mm. are tempted to bail on our role of headship. Okay. So the same thing happens where I hear it. Like sometimes a guy feels like, man, the most humble thing I can do is come into the office and explain that I can't be the head of my home. My wife's godly or my wife's smarter. My wife's more skilled. My wife's got more abilities. So the submissive, the humble thing to do 
would be to step down and let her be in the position of headship. Okay. Unless you consider, don't just talk to your pastor about right. that. You're looking at Jesus and saying, I'm not submitting to the way you've drawn things up. We're going to do it different in my home. And I'm about to ask you a question now based off of what you just said. Okay. All right. Because you because you you set up the whole like the enemy coming in the midst of that, like with Adam out of the way. And I'm starting to see our society, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not a lot of fathers in the home. By design, it seems by design that the enemy wants to, well, first of all, destroy the, the the image bearer um I don't know what to say yeah the, the whole idea of it um because it was Adam and Eve were meant to be be one and there's a separation I don't know where I'm going with this yeah, I, yeah. what I think I'm trying to say is I've I've kind of heard like I don't know if this is this might get me in trouble but it's in would you say it, it's intentional to get the man out of the picture so that the enemy can come and to to our women to our to the woman not because they're weaker vessels yeah but maybe i don't know i'd say it's an it's a strategy that attacks both it's not just going after the women cuz like i say if men hear the story long enough you're not needed you're not necessary you're not as good step down you know and does it the men and the women don't flourish. Mm. It hurts our homes. It hurts our wives. It also hurts the husband mm. because you don't have the ability. If God said, okay, you're called to be the head. You look back at Jesus and go, well, I know that applies to everyone else who's married, but that one actually doesn't apply to me. You can't mm. flourish in your walk. If you're looking at Jesus and saying, huh, no. Mm. And so, and I, that's kind of where I use the illustration of the women's women's liberation kind of on its progressive secular model and China. I think Satan does both. Mm. So part of the reason why it's worthy to acknowledge that headship sounds scary to women is because there's been horrible examples of it. Mm -hmm. And every man who is a head of his wife is going to fail, is going to sin, is going to use that to his own advantage instead of always thinking about the advantage of his family. And he has to then confess it, ask for forgiveness, take it, take the family to Calvary then mm -hmm. at that moment. So I get it. Like, um, men haven't done a great job. And so it's easy for women not to trust men and think it'd be safer for me to do it myself. Yeah. So then what happens? The enemy also sends the message to men of if your woman doesn't want to give you that, she doesn't want to follow, then you take it, you wrestle it from her, you make it happen. And that's where I say like male chauvinism comes in mm -hmm. this male dominant culture that like women are going to an accessory or our property mm -hmm. or just coming along to, you know, and so the mm -hmm. enemy wants to go at both. And that's why it's critical. And that was kind of, I think one of the other things they said was they brought in Ephesians five and they said, now you said that it doesn't tell the husband he's supposed to lead, but it does tell the wife she's supposed to submit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that imply the man is supposed to lead? And I would say, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's the point. The leadership is implied rather than being imperative. And the ability to lead is largely dependent upon the wife being willing to submit. Mm -hmm. And your, your, your definition of your leadership, your motivation of your leadership, the desired outcome of your leadership shouldn't be leadership but love so why do i why do i try and be the head of my home and why do i seek to lead my home mm. it's all driven by we don't arrive just if i'm leading we arrive if i'm loving charity well yeah. and charity then is called to submit to my attempts to do that mm. and we we work together in that so that yeah there there does end up being leading happening but not just because I'm grabbing, you know, you work for that person who they just think they're the authority because they have the manager badge and yet they don't handle their own life. Well, they're lazy. They expect everybody else to do the work. They're incompetent. And you're like, okay, you're in charge, but I have no, you're not the leader. It's somebody else on the crew that actually gets things done. You know, we don't have the ability someday for you to like, I'm the husband submit wife. Like <laughs> that's not going to end well. Like, well, right. Well. Yeah. yeah, but it's like that instead we seek to love well mm -hmm. and she seeks to submit well. Yeah. Um, and they they work in companion. And that's kink. There's a kink in the chain there. Like sometimes if we if if we're not getting the respect that we 
want, then the king stop, it stops that love. We're not loving. And so there's never any of this going on. It stops because something is not happening. If you don't have the gospel at the center of this, whether it's for our elder team with our church body, whether it's for a husband and wife and their relationship, whether it's for parents, whether it's for employers to their employees, whether it's to government officials and people in leadership, if you don't have the gospel at it, I don't think you can get to unity mm. because you're not going to do it perfectly. Mm. And you're going to have to have that moment where you're able to take it to the cross, mm. ask for forgiveness, confess what was wrong in your desire to honor the Lord moving forward. Mm. And I think that's part of our hope is like when we look at a passage like this, it gives us the vision of where we should aim, but it, we have to remind ourselves again, God's not waiting to meet us once we get there. God's meeting us here. Mm. If you heard the sermon and you're one of those wives that needed to let go or was struggling, God's still with you. You could sing that last song to the glory of God and know his presence because he's not sitting back, arms crossed, saying, I've told you your husband's the head. And until you're happy with that, mm. hang on. But he's there to confess and mm. say, it might be things in my past. It might be things in my husband's past. Mm. It might be things in my church past that make this a really scary message. But Lord, help me grow in faith. Yeah. And if yeah. you're the husband sitting there going, dang it. Yeah. I hate being told that the, the man is in a place of headship because I don't want to. I've neglected it. I've backed off. I've been intimidated. I've just been lazy. Yeah. You don't have to wait okay, God, I'll clean up my act and then I'll get there and you can meet our family there. You take it to the cross right now. Yeah, amen, yeah. amen. I mean, just to be transparent with you, the, the smoothest times we've had in our home is when this happens. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at this and I'm being like, okay, this was just not a good message. This was like a, a how-to guy mm -hmm. to have that unity, as you said, in your home. When Lisa and I are operating this way, Man, there's bliss. There yeah. is a sweetness. There is a joy. But as soon as there's a challenge somewhere in there, yeah. where I'm not loving and she's not respecting, oh man, yeah, it's it's chaos. It's things are not right. The kids are not right. You can totally see the enemy working in the midst of that. So thank you for unpacking yeah. that, brother. Well, I think that's even the last thing is like that's where the challenge lies. Like we've talked to people before. There's people who I do, but there's people who have left our church pretty upset with the church leadership mm. that previously before leaving and being upset with the church leadership stated they were thankful for elder leadership they were glad to submit under it they didn't want to have a vote or a voice you know they 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 thought they were submitting to leadership mm -hmm. now hear me on this submitting doesn't mean you can't challenge doesn't mean you can't point out blind spots doesn't mean you can't correct mm -hmm. absolutely all of that yeah cool. but when that process went through mm -hmm. and a person found themselves in a position of being able to of just having to say like well I, I i can't say what you're doing is wrong but i will say that i don't like what you're doing mm -hmm. and they weren't willing to stay they weren't really interested in submitting to leadership mm -hmm. when when you're and so it's a different model. And I know it's, I, I don't do this well, but like when those moments where leading with love and submitting with respect get challenging in our home, mm -hmm. it's because those are the moments to actually apply this passage. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's hard because you're on different pages. Mm -hmm. And so what am I tempted to do? I'm still tempted to lead, just mm -hmm. not with love. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and she's tempted to want to lead because yeah. she feels I'm not being loving. Right. And also this is suddenly becoming the challenge to her of like, Hey, I was okay with the last three things that we talked about because we're on the same page, but now we're not on the same page. Um, and so we have to embrace those moments as mm. growth opportunities. But sure. truly, I think, um, that is the case. Yeah. Like we can, we can walk in moments like that and say, Hey, how am I going to do this to the glory of God? Even as we're struggling, understanding that struggle provides the opportunity to display the glory of God through our mutual honoring of each other. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I, well, I think we need to close. We're already at 35 penalty minutes. minutes. Yeah. We're already yeah. at 30 minutes, but we'll be back next week. Bradley, was it nice having you on, man. Thanks for yeah. having me on. All right. Back yeah. by popular demand. Yeah. Next yeah, I don't know about that, but you're going to, He's going to close us out in a song, right? Because we used to close with music and it didn't happen. So, Bye, yeah. ready? Here we go. Song, song, you need to close. <laughs> <laughs>
hey, hey, well, we love you guys, man, and had an awesome worship time with you guys on Sunday. We can't wait to you worship you. You're feeling you. better. Okay. Feel like you're getting your feet yeah. under you more. Things are, things are, yeah. things are coming yeah. you know, good. Good. Things are coming together. I'm feeling good. 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 Feeling good. Thank good. you guys you for your patience yeah. and grace. Um, but look, man, remember, Christ has done all the work, so we're just driving home. Yeah, we're just driving home. <laughs> I don't, like I said last time, we don't, I don't normally watch towards the end. Once, once I know we're done answering the questions and going, I told you this before. You said that you're going to find a solution. Rushed. Yeah. You said we might find a solution. <laughs> <laughs>